10 years later, 10th anniversary of the war in Iraq, Thomas Young, Iraq War veteran, wounded April 4th, 2004, his fifth day in Iraq, shot in Sadr City, is now writing a letter on this 10th anniversary called The Last Letter, a message to George W. Bush and Dick Cheney from a dying veteran. Thomas, can you read some of your letter to the former president and vice president? Uh, absolutely. It, uh, I write the 10th anniversary of the Iraq War on behalf of my fellow Iraq veterans. I write this letter on behalf of the 4488 soldiers and Marines who died in Iraq. I write this letter on behalf of hundreds of thousands of veterans who have been wounded and on behalf of those who bear those wounds. I am one of those I am one of the gravely injured. I am paralyzed from in an insurgent ambush in 2004 in Saudi City. My life is going to an end. I am living under hospice care. I write this letter on behalf of husbands and wives who have lost spouses, on behalf of children who have lost parents, on behalf of the fathers and mothers We've lost sons and daughters, and on the behalf of those of those who care for the many thousands of my fellow veterans who have brain injuries, I write this letter on behalf of veterans, those veterans whose trauma and self-revolution for what they have done, witnessed, endured in Iraq have led to suicide and on behalf of the uh, active duty soldiers and Marines who commit on average a suicide a day. I write this letter on behalf of some of the one million Iraqi dead and on behalf of the countless Iraqi wounded. I write this letter on behalf of us all the human detritus your words are behind, those who will spend their lives in unending pain and grief. Your position of authority, your millions of dollars of public personal wealth, your public relations consultants, and your privilege and power cannot mask the hollowness of your character. You said to us, you said to fight and die in Iraq. After you, Miss Jamie, dodged the draft in Vietnam, and you, Mr. Bush, went AWOL from the, your National Guard unit. Your cowardice and selfishness were established decades ago. You were not willing to risk yourselves for our nation, but you sent hundreds of thousands of young men and women to be sacrificed in, in, in a senseless war with no more thought than takes to put out the garbage. I write this letter, my last letter, to you, Mr. Bush and Mr. Cheney. I write not because I think you grasp the, the terrible human and moral consequence of your lies, manipulation, and thirst for wealth and power. I write this letter because before my own death, I want to make it clear that I and hundreds of thousands of my fellow veterans along with millions of my fellow citizens, along with the hundreds of millions of more in Iraq and the Middle East, you know fully who you are and what you've done. You may have made justice, 
but no I you are each guilty of egregious war crimes, of plunder, and finally of murder, including the murder of thousands of young Americans, my fellow veterans, whose future you stole. I join the army two days, two days after 9-11, after 9-11 attacks. I join the army because our country had been attacked. I wanted to strike back at those who killed some 3,000 plus of my fellow citizens. I did not join the army to go to Iraq, a country that had no part in the 9-11 attacks and did not pose a threat to its neighbors, much less the U.S. I did not join the army to liberate Iraqis or to shut down mythical weapons of mass destruction facilities or to implant what you cynically called democracy in Baghdad and the Middle East. I did not join the army to rebuild Iraq, which at the time you told us could be paid for by, by Iraq's war revenues. Instead, this war has cost the United States over $3 trillion. I especially did not join the war to carry out preemptive war. Preemptive war is illegal in international law. And as a soldier in Iraq, I was, I know now, abetting our society, abetting your idiocy and your crimes. The award Iraq War is the biggest strategic blunder the US in US history. It obliterated the bounds of power in the Middle East. It installed a corrupt and brutal pro-Iranian government in Baghdad. One cemented in power through the use of torture, death squads, and terror. And it has left Iran as the dominant force in the region on every level, moral, strategic, military, and economic, Iraq was a failure. And it was you, Mr. Bush and Mr. Cheney, who started this war. It is you who should pay the consequences. I have, like many other wounded and many other disabled veterans, suffered from the inadequate and often inept care provided by the Veterans Administration. I have, like many other mental uh, disabled veterans, come to realize that our mental and physical disabilities wounds and wounds are of no interest to you, perhaps of no interest to any politician. We were used. We were betrayed. And we have been abandoned. You, Mr. Bush, make much pretense about being a Christian. But isn't lying a sin? Isn't murder a sin? Aren't theft and selfish ambition sins? I am not a Christian, but I believe in the Christian ideal. I believe that what you do to the least of your own brothers, you will, you finally do to yourself, to your own soul. I would not be Brian Slater if I'd been wounded in Afghanistan against those forces that carried out the attacks of 9-11. Had I been wounded there, I would still be miserable because of my physical deterioration and imminent death. But I would at least have the comfort of knowing that my injuries were a consequence of my own decision 
to defend our country. I love the country I love. I would not have lined my bed, my body filled with painkillers, my life ebbing away, and deal with the fact that hundreds of thousands of human beings, including children, including myself, were sacrificed by you for little more than the greed of oil companies, for the alliance with the oil seekers of with the oil seekers of Saudi Arabia and your insane visions of empire. My day of reckoning is upon me. Yours will come. I hope you be put on trial, but most I hope for your sakes, that you find the moral courage to face what you have done to me and to many, many others who deserve to live. I hope that before your time on earth ends, as mine is now ending, you will find the strength of character to stand before the American public and the world, and in particular the Iraqi people, beg for your and beg for your forgiveness.